Hi there, it's Lee here. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be sharing with you my experience overclocking my GTX 970 to get the maximum performance when mining Ethereum. So I'm going to be showing you this. I normally just use it for general uh, mining. It's a home uh, PC, so just a regular PC. But what I thought I'd do is just kind of a uh, do a bit of extreme overclocking and uh, extract the maximum performance out of it and share that experience with you. Uh, I thought it might be interesting for you guys uh, to see exactly uh, exactly how I'm going to do it, um, the clock speeds that are involved, temperatures and all that kind of thing. And you can kind of see my experience uh, with this and hopefully um, you, you, know, you might learn something and you might want to use that information to get the best performance out of your own hardware, but hopefully not to a point where you actually um, go too far and um, do any damage to your actual hardware. So before I start, um, this is not something that I'd really recommend for you to do on your home hardware unless you know obviously aware of the actual risks themselves. Uh, by uh, overclocking your hardware it's going to be running a lot hotter and harder and you could damage your actual graphics card. So um, I'm going to be taking sort of the risk and just sharing my experience and um, so you guys don't have to. So I'm going to be using the actual computer, which is actually below me, uh, but the screen is uh, over just here. So I'm going to be kind of looking over this way and uh, just sharing that whole experience with you. So it's Windows 10 machine. Uh, the card is a MSI GTX 970. Um, so let's get everything fired up. So I'll start up the miner first of all, and I'll just show you how I normally use it. So I'm using the general miner 1.0.8. Um, I know it's a little bit outdated now, but it works well for me. I'll just show you the actual config. So just your regular config. Uh, let's get that fired up. Um, and then this is how I would normally mine. And normally um, it gets about 18.3 mega hashes on Ethereum, but I'll just show you um, exactly what I do. So if I just go to my documents, uh, let's scroll down a little bit. I've got a little uh, batch file and what it does is it sets the actual GPU clocks using the NVIDIA SMI tool um, and if you don't use that what happens is um, you can't basically unlock the overclocking performance of the card so I'll just show you what's inside that as well so it's just got the location and then it's got this NVIDIA dash SMI sorry and then it just a setting to set the actual clock speed so you've got the memory clock and the core clock and then you just got pause at the end so you just need to run that as an administrator and you should notice that the actual clock speed in changes um, so the mining hash rate changes on the actual miner itself so you see it's just notched up a little bit there as well so that's how I normally run uh, the ETH miner when I'm running it at home on this um, particular machine so what I'm going to do now is um, I'll open up GPUZ because it's got a little bit of extra information and also MSI Afterburner Let's just kind of rearrange these. Okay, so we've got GPU Z, uh, like I say, uh, MSI GTX 970, um, that's all the regular standard information. I'm just going to change it to sensors just so you can see the um, clock speeds. I have noticed that the with GPU Z, the GPU memory clock is reported at half the true clock. I don't know why that is, that's some kind of a reporting. Uh, bug and also the power consumption is reported in TDP it doesn't show you the actual watts um, but you know and I don't have a watt meter as well so I can only kind of guesstimate uh, what the actual true power usage is but I just want to share the experience with you anyway so like I say if I use the NVIDIA SMI tool I'm getting 19.92 uh, mega hashes per second and then if we look at the MSI afterburner we can see the core clock is at 1329 and the memory is 3506 there. Uh, GPU temperature, 72 degrees. I've got the actual side of the uh, PC case off just to help keep it a little bit cooler. So what I normally do is, if I'm gonna overclock the card, I overclock it just slightly. So it's uh, 120, sorry, 175%, uh, sorry, 175 megahertz increase on the core clock and 100 megahertz on the memory clock. And I just hit apply. And that normally gets me um, around about 21 uh, mega hashes. I think it's been up to about 22 previously when the Ethereum DAG file was a little bit smaller. Um, obviously as the DAG file gets bigger and bigger, it's more memory intensive and so the performance is slightly less. So that's recently slowed down. 
So this is how I would normally run it in a slightly sort of um, overclocked fashion. It runs fairly cool, uh, not too much bother, and the fans and everything are really quite quiet. So now what I'm going to do is um, kind of start taking it a bit more extreme. So you can see the overclock settings there at the moment. I've got 15.03 and uh, 3602 we've got on the memory clock. So I'm going to start ramping it up by quite an extreme now. So the core clock is going up by 230 megahertz and the memory clock is going to take it up 510 megahertz. And uh, I'll just show you what the results are. I'm also going to increase the fan speed to maximum uh, just to keep the actual whole everything cool. So you might hear a bit of fan noise. So um, apologies uh, for that. Hopefully it won't um, affect the video too much. So let's um, hit that. You might be able to hear the fan as it increases in there. And you can see that the hash rate jumped up there to 2307, uh, 22.54, 23.07. And then this is what I've been getting sort of previously with even when I've um, been taking it to a little bit higher. Um, and I'll show you now, but I think the, with this card, oh sorry, I forgot to mention as well, the also increased the power limit to 110%. Um, um, but you can see the actual power consumption is actually still running at less than 90 um, through there, according to GPU-Z. So I think with this card, I think you could probably get quite a bit more, but because of the actual power limitations, and I can't unlock it or increase it anymore, or at least not that I know of at the moment. So that's kind of like restricting it. Um, I'll show you now. So if you just go sort of um, increase it, I've got another profile set up. Um, so let's hit that. So that increases the, the memory core to 575 increase. So our memory clock now is 4,082 megahertz. And the performance is kind of about the same. Um, it's still 22.5-2307, not much change there. Um, now if you are um, going to be overclocking, you probably want to use just like small um, increments. So I've already done like an overclocking video, so you can go back and look at that and it will give you a more step-by-step -step breakdown into overclocking. Like I say, otherwise you risk damaging your card. So um, I'm quite familiar with this setup, so don't just you know co copy this or anything. Just do a bit of research before you get started. So if I increase the memory clock to uh, 625, um, again, it's not really yielding very much performance increase. So really our top speed at the moment, and it's you know, it's changing on, on a block by block uh, kind of basis, but the top speed that we're getting is 23.07 mega hashes, which is actually really good. So that, you know, it's three mega hashes over the standard kind of uh, overclock speeds that I've been using. Um, the core clock, like I say, I don't think we're going to get any much more performance out of it. I will, I will try increasing it a little bit, but it says that we're already at 100% on the power limit. So I think even if we increase the core clock now, we're just not going to get any um, performance increase. But what I'll do is I'll just take it up a little bit more. Let's try a 240. So it was 230, now it's 240, so just a 10 megahertz increase. Because also at some point... Uh, the machine is likely to crash as well um, and if it does crash it's normally not too big a deal just restart the machine and it's it's normally fine except that you know if it ever doesn't you know if it's ever not fine it will obviously be, be a bit sucky so um, 240 increase there and it's not still not going over that 2307 so we're just not getting any more um, I'll reluctantly I'll try 250 but I think we're kind of very near the limit and I can tell you I'll show you as well let me just show you before I click this what happens is if you're getting near the actual limit of the graphics cards or you're stressing it too much you can see that there's some um, display artifacts on the screen so you can see in the GPU Z there you've got these black boxes so that is basically when you kind of push in too hard so it's kind of distorting the display you might get colored blocks and things um, or any like glitches with the actual um, overview and stuff like so when you start seeing all this kind of stuff um, it's just as like mine a bit there that's really when you're pushing the card um, you know to, to the limit so don't don't push very much um, further so I'm gonna leave it about there because like I said I don't want to do any, any damage so I'm just gonna reset the actual GPU clocks and what I'll also have to do as well is uh, restart the actual machine and then it'll just clear up these uh, glitches and box type stuff 
So that's about it for this video. So I just wanted to show you the, the maximum performance that you can extract or I've extracted from the GTX 970 with Ethereum. So the top hash that we was getting there was 23.07 mega hashes on Ethereum. And the clocks that we was using, uh, the maximum one, although it didn't really yield much difference, was uh, 4,000 and let's call it 1560 on the uh, core clock there. Um, obviously you can have a quick look back and just check on those claw clocks throughout the whole sort of uh, period because like I say the power limit on this card was actually preventing us really from going any higher. I think if I found a way to um, unlock the power limit in the future we'll probably be able to get a little bit more performance so I'll try to look into that and I'll do another video for you guys. So that's it for this video. Um, hopefully you've liked it and enjoyed watching. As always, uh, questions or comments, put those in the comments box below. If you did like it, be sure to give this video a like. And you know, if you like this kind of video or other crypto mining videos in general, be sure to subscribe because I upload videos uh, with this kind of content on a regular basis. And um, it'll be great to have you as part of the little community that we're growing here. So till next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.